All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Here we are again. Another five tips when applying for federal grants. If you missed the first two videos, I will have a link to them in this video's description. So check them out after you're done here. Or go watch them first and then come back. I don't care. It's up to you. I don't judge. <laughs> um, like like my previous, uh, previous lists, these are in no particular order, and this is by no means definitive. So go ahead and take these five tips and the other 10 that I presented and go ahead and mash them up with, you know, other consultants' ideas, and I think you'll be all right. So with that said, let's get into it. So the first thing is always be ready. And I've talked about this before in other videos and on my podcast, and I've blasted it out in other places on social media, but I think it's worth repeating several times. Uh, the 30-day application windows are, well, they're becoming the norm. Now, regulations recommend that agencies provide organizations with 60 days to respond, but at the very least, no less than 30 days. And a, a few departments that consistently provided 60 days in the past have been shrinking that window. Uh, you know, in the first half of 2018, that's when I started to notice it. You know, and now it seems like 40 to 45 days is the average, you know, roughly, but 30 days that bare minimum is increasingly frequent. And if you're developing a new program concept from scratch and preparing a federal application, 30 days is a tight schedule. And that assumes you find the grant on the day it's announced. You know, so I would say always have a few plans roughed out, you know, on the whiteboard or on post-it notes stuck to your computer monitor or on your wall. So you're not starting from square one when a grant becomes available because you never know when you're going to have to, you know, jump into action. Kind of in that light, building on the previous point, and I've said this um, in other presentations and on my podcast, make sure that you always check both, uh, both sources online, the Federal Register at federalregister.gov and grant, uh, grants.gov for new grant opportunities. You know, sometimes opportunities post on one site and not the other, and sometimes there's a delay posting to one of those sites. Uh, I've seen several cases where there's as much as a two-week delay for the same grant announcement to post on each site. You would think all new grants would post on both sites on the same day, but that doesn't always happen. Um, yeah, I would say if your organization is serious about pursuing federal grants, you need to check the Federal Register and Grants.gov every two to three days, preferably daily. I've said in the past you can check them as little as once per week, but with, you know, deadlines shrinking, you need to be more, more aggressive with your searches. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we consultants, we're pretty good about sharing when grants become available, but we're not perfect. If we miss one by a few days or a week, that's time you could have been preparing your application. Uh, personally, I think you should scan both sites every day. Just make it part of your morning routine before work. The Federal Register is published online first thing in the morning, and grants on grants.gov post throughout the day. It's best to check grants.gov late in the morning or early afternoon so you won't have to remember to double back the next day to see if you missed anything. Next, something often overlooked, always add a project evaluator to your development team. No matter what grant you go after, there's always 
an evaluation component to it. Now, if you can handle this in-house, fantastic. Um, you know, but just remember, you're always you're always going to have your own program goals and objectives to measure, but you're also going to need to evaluate the funding agency's mandatory performance measures. Um, if you have a project evaluator on your writing team from the get-go, they'll be able to develop an efficient method for evaluating your program's performance. And when you build them into the grant's budget, you'll be able to hire them to conduct the annual evaluations you need. It just makes sense to bring them on board uh, from day one. Fourth, this is often overlooked, and I try to tell people, you know, whoever will listen, don't overlook professional development. In every federal grant application you submit, make sure to include a budget item for staff training and, of course, any necessary travel expenses. Organizations get so focused on serving their clients and getting the most out of the grant dollars, they often forget to develop their own capacity. Training funds are hard to find and even more difficult to squeeze out of limited, unrestricted budgets. The federal government, on the other hand, is very accommodating in terms of staff development. As long as the training you propose benefits your grant program, funding agencies will likely approve it. If you already have a federal grant, you know, consider revising your budget to add a couple of training courses. Just start the ball rolling, even if it's only $250 or $500. Uh, more staff training leads to more successful programs, and successful programs lead to greater opportunities for additional funding. It's, uh, it's a beautiful cycle. So fifth, why do you want the grant? And it's not a simple question, seriously. Why do you want a federal grant? Does your organization not have any money and you're chasing the dollars? Or are you being advised by someone that federal grants are the way to go? Or do you have a strategy with this federal grant? You know, do you want to do you want to use it to expand a successful program to the next level and to leverage it to attract additional funding from state and private sources? You know, have a strategy. Uh, you know, we have an idea and we need money is not a strategy. That's coming from a place of defense and desperation. Be proactive with your uh, with your intent. And for the bonus tip, more money isn't always the solution. Is a federal grant truly right for your organization and its current needs? You know, this kind of ties back to the previous point about uh, asking why you want a grant to begin with. And contrary to popular notion, more money doesn't always solve problems. In fact, sometimes it creates more problems than, than you expect. If you're a new organization and funding is tight, you know, I get why you're going after grants of all types and, you know, other types of funding. That's the business. Now, on the other hand, if you're in a mature organization with lots of existing funding sources or you're a public agency with multiple forms of unrestricted and restricted funding, maybe a new grant isn't the way to go. You know, instead uh, instead of spending the, the time chasing a grant, how about taking a look at your existing budgets and your existing programs? You might already have the money you need uh, for a new program, you know, right underneath uh, your nose. You know, what happens when you take on more and more grants, you end up with uh, programs and a staff load that may or may not be sustainable. And very few people want to cut employees or programs, even 
if they're less than effective. Because, well, one, you don't want to admit a program isn't very good. I mean, that's just human nature. And two, you don't want someone to lose their job. I mean, letting people go sucks. So to avoid these difficult decisions, you end up chasing new grants and new funding just to keep the machine rolling along. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, you need to be able to have those tough conversations and make hard uh, decisions if in the long run it improves your operations and the services you provide. So don't always assume you need a grant to start a new program. Uh, you might be better off cutting a less effective program and repurposing those dollars on something that will be uh, more impactful. Well, there you go. That's all I have. Now, if you hear a strange, huh, if you hear a strange buzzing noise <laughs> in this video, that is an airplane flying overhead. Uh, apparently, one twenty in the afternoon is a busy airplane time here in Vegas. So, <laughs> I guess this is a good time as any to wrap this up. So, that's all I have. Thank you very much for your time. If you have any questions, make sure you email me through my website or reach out on social media. I'm here to help. I'll answer you know, whatever questions you have. If you found this useful, like it or give it a thumbs up. Feel free to leave a comment. I absolutely love feedback. And be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future presentations. Thanks, and I will see you next time. Adios.